Alright folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and uh, I have two little pieces of information for you. The first is on North Anna Nuclear Power Station which is probably 15 miles from where I live unfortunately, maybe 20. Uh, currently in the scintillator I'm testing, you know I really gotta get that shield clean. That, it looks ugly and just ugly as sin. Behind, these, uh, behind this little piece right here I have uh, a sample from North Anna that's currently cooking off in the uh, scintillator, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, tritium doesn't emit any gamma or x-rays, so why would you test it with a scintillator? Well, I already tested it with a Geiger counter. Um, I have all my counts written down here and everything like this with a Geiger counter. I took the water bottle and I ran it for an hour with a Geiger counter, specifically a, panca a pancake Geiger Mueller tube against it with lead all the way around it to make sure that it was reasonably shielded. Then I ran it for an hour with a jug of water. This is a one gallon jug, mind you, that came from my city water. That's my control water. Then I did another hour with that, and another hour with the city, and another hour with that, and so on. So the point is I did six tests that were intermixed at night, which is the best time to do them, because uh, you don't get as much uh, solar radiation. You get only cosmic radiation. Anyhow, <clears throat> over over the entire span of the tests, I came out to an average, and this is summing all of the Lake Anna water. This is the uh, Lake Anna is the lake that's right beside North Anna Nuclear Power Station, and I might I, I don't know where the actual well water is derived from. The um, sample I have is actually well water, and well water is where they found the tritium uh, uh, recently that came from North Anna. But anyhow, the uh, water that I tested, uh, I summed all those all the counts up. I divided by three to get an average, and then I divided by 60 minutes, the amount of time I ran the test to get my counts per minute. Same with the city water, my control water. And I came out overall with a total of 1.2723 counts per minute higher for the for the uh, North Anna water. Now, one count per minute is not very much unless you're taking into account that this is three one-hour tests that are summed, and every single one of them came out with the same sort of result. Test number one, 1,469 counts for North Anna, 1,389 for the control. Test two, 1,546 for Lake Anna water, 1,465 for the city, city water. Number three, 1,431 for Lake Anna water, 1,363 for the control water. So as you can see, every single time the, the North Anna water came out, more radioactive. In fact, every single one of its counts are higher. So, <clears throat> I'm running it through the um, scintillator here to see if I notice anything like uh, maybe natural uranium or something like that that could be causing this effect. Because the problem is I don't really have a control from North Anna from before the leak occurred, assuming that it's not just been there a long time, because there's evidence now to suggest that maybe the leaks have been there for a while. So I won't ever be able to get a truly conclusive test out of this because I can't perform beta spectroscopy, which is what I would require to actually know if this were tritium. But anyhow, as you can see, there it is on my screen. Back, this is my uh, lead shielding, 511 kiloelectron volts. Nothing really going along here. So you see, there's not really much of anything in the water. So I'm torn as to what the cause could be. The second part of this video is to talk to you about um, uh, tea. I finally tracked down a bottle of tea that I think may be from right around the perfect time. There goes my pen. Here, let me show you. This, this tea may have actually come from right around the Fukushima time period. For example, Friday, March 11th, 2011 is when Fukushima occurs, the actual um, uh, earthquake that causes everything in the tsunami. And how many days was it? Let me see, I, I just calculated here. 26 days later, 26 days later on April the 6th of Wednesday, this bottle of tea is made. And this bottle of tea is, where does it say it, where does it say it, where does it say it? There we go. Product of Japan. Most of these don't say that anymore. If you buy these and look at them, they say product of Thailand. So this guy was made in the first month. So... There's no real way to know if this is contaminated or if that's right or not, but I haven't been able to find anything even remotely close to this. This occurred, this was made right before they stopped shipping. 
And I know it was made at that time because I took the uh, neck band around the top and subtract 15 months from it, which is what I was told by Ito N is the method to determine how old these things are when their actual production date. So there's no real way to know, but this is possibly contaminated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it inside one of these plastic bottles, which I've tested. They don't have anything in them. They're absolutely inert as far as the gamma spectrometer is concerned. I'm going to turn it upside down like this. This just has water in it. I'm just testing the seal to make sure it's good. And then I put a sheet or two of aluminum over top of it to make sure that any beta that's in this doesn't, you know, come out. And then I stick it inside of the uh, testing chamber. And I'm going to run it for 24 hours and see what I get. I am curious. And the reason I'm curious, partially, is because people have asked me. Partially, because I drink Ito N tea. I know this is Wegmans brand tea, Wegmans grocery store, but it's actually Ito N. So, we shall find out what's actually in it. And I have tested it many times at the Geiger counter, but it needs to run in that. So anyhow, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and bye-bye.